This is Surf Radio. Weekends are fun with Lee Higgins. This morning I'm very excited to have the founder of the Wildlife Friends Foundation, Thailand, Edwin Week, with me. Good morning, Edwin. How are you? Good morning, Lee. I'm fine, thank you. But first of all, I want to find out how you actually started this wonderful project. Yeah, I, I live in Thailand since 1988, mm -hmm. and the first 11, 12 years I run my own business uh, manufacturing uh, fashion accessories and, and che cheaper garments for export. I did that actually uh, yeah, for a long time, um, but at the end of 1999 I, um, I, I met a friend who, who bought himself a monkey for his wife, and um, he found out he couldn't take care of it. It was quite difficult. He thought that I was really an animal lover because he knew that I was, you know, was working with uh, dogs and cats, uh, s sterilizing them in charm. And uh, every week, I would pay the local veterinarian for this uh, this work uh, to, you know, to diminish the amount of, of street uh, mm. dogs and cats. Um, I took the monkey in to actually find it a new home. And it wasn't very easy to find a rescue center for, for wildlife in Thailand. At that time, I, I knew about the zoo um, near Cha'am, that's actually a government rescue center. I went there, wanted to hand over that monkey to the director there, and when I actually showed up, he said, well, I don't want it. He said, that monkey's going to be in a tiny cage for the rest of its life, can never go back to the wild again, and once it's taken in on paperwork, I can't do anything for it anymore and there's hardly any money uh, to feed it. So maybe find another place. So I took the monkey back, back home, went online and the internet of course in that time wasn't as, as widely uh, available uh, as now and uh, while I was looking around I found an organization in Bangkok that uh, was rescuing wildlife, had a rescue center in Lopuri as they stated. And I went to their office in Bangkok, in Sukhumvit area, and when I arrived there I saw all these animals under the building in tiny cages. Mm -hmm. There was even a monkey uh, chained to the, well, one of the office desks. So instead of leaving my monkey behind, I took <laughs> one back. That was the second monkey, my second rescue. Yes. And um, yeah, then I started really thinking about what I want to do. Um, not long after that, in a few weeks, I had a bad car accident okay. and uh, after that actually I even started thinking more and more about well I wouldn't say the meaning of life I wasn't that heavy but I really wanted to do something different and it's a bit like as a child when you grow up you want to be you want to be that fireman you want to be that hero you mm. want to be that soldier you 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 know you have these dreams yes and you forget yes you do you forget those dreams and you go with the stream and you go into something that maybe is not really for you mm. and at that time just before the year 2000, when everybody's worried about their computers, will my computer still work on the 1st of January? <laughs> what's going to happen? Yeah, what's going to happen? And, and I said, yeah, I'm going to make this change. So I decided to, uh, to stop working uh, my business and, and set up a small rescue center, which got a bit out of hand. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say, yes, it has got a bit out of hand. How many rye of land have you got here? We have over 500 rye of land, and as a joke to <laughs> visitors, I always make the same joke. I do it again now. <laughs> um, for the women amongst us, we have about 88 rye, uh, sorry, 88 hectares of land. Yes. For the men, that's about 190 soccer fields. <laughs> so everybody, so gets everybody it right. can put it into like perspective. Like how big is this place? With over 900 animals currently under our care. And what type of animals have you got here? Wow, we have. Mm. 24 elephants here, we have 23 tigers, 5 leopards, we have over 35 bears of two different species, we got over 100 gibbons of six different species, um, over 300 monkeys of all kinds of species, we have birds of prey, we have hornbills here, we have otters, many of them, night monkeys, uh, slow lorises, um, an orangutan, a chimpanzee that were rescued during COVID. It's so many, amazing, so many animals. Amazing. Yep. Well, Evan, I did the tour yesterday. It was my second time, actually. But yesterday, I was really impressed <coughs> by the tigers. So can we come back and talk a little bit about the Tiger Rescue Centre? More than happy to. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you are. This morning, we're talking about wildlife with the founder of the Wildlife Friends Foundation, Thailand, Edwin Week. Edwin, yesterday, I did the tour for the second time, which was absolutely amazing, actually, both times. But yesterday, I was really impressed by the tigers in the, the centre that you've built there. Tell me a little bit about tigers in Thailand. Yeah, you know, um, 
very often visitors coming to to the wildlife rescue rescue center or people I just meet in in you know in a restaurant a bar or whatever around Hawaii in or Bangkok when when we talk about wildlife people always ask you know what kind of wildlife do you actually have and people are usually you know really surprised to hear that we got two kind of bears in the wild in Thailand, for example, sun bears and, and, and moon bears, uh, Asiatic black bears and Malayan sun bears, uh, to be you know, more precise. But tigers in the wild is another thing that, that people really don't realize that mm. we still have tigers in Thailand in the wild. And as a matter of fact, um, more tigers than, than over the last 20 years. We have an increasing population of wild tigers. Okay. And right on our doorstep, where we are right now, behind the mountains that you can see here, are tigers living in the wild and not that far from Hua Hin and Chiam. Yes. Uh, the chance of you seeing them in the national park is, is slim. Right. I would say close to, to zero. Uh, every now and then people get lucky and, and see one crossing one of the, the paths or roads in the national parks. But, mm. but they're there yeah. and that's very important. And currently uh, around 200 tigers of two different subspecies live in the wild in Thailand. Okay. And so why did you develop the, the rescue center here? Yeah, tigers are not only found in the wild, but they're also found in the illegal wildlife trafficking. Mm. And um, there are a lot of tiger farms that uh, export dead tigers, live tigers, to other countries, which is illegal. Mm. Uh, but there are also many tiger farms in Thailand where people visit and make selfies with tigers. There's a huge demand for young tigers, for cubs, to make photographs, selfies with in tourism. Uh, and the value of these tigers is is pretty high. The profit made is is very high. So it's a lucrative market for people. And um, we believe that with the rescue center we set up here, we have a chance to have these animals spend the rest of their life in a more natural environment where they can actually uh, behave like like wild animals again. Um, and the awareness we create by people coming here, hearing the stories, seeing the tigers, um, is important, I think, uh, because we can educate people, we create the awareness, and at the same time, we can support efforts to, uh, to protect the tigers in mm. the wild. We support uh, rangers, we can support uh, research, mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, you know, we help the government in caring for these animals, because it's a very expensive task. You know, when you know that a tiger eats 5% of its body weight every day, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yes. You're talking about five, six, seven kilos of, of meat every yes. day that you gotta feed these animals with. Yes. That's not cheap. And altogether, we believe that this big cat rescue center, as we call it, is helping uh, with the conservation and uh, support the conservation in the wild. So do these animals, uh, after they've had a, an awful start to life, do they ever get back into the wild or you look after them here until uh, their end? Mm -hmm. With a lot of wildlife you can actually release animals in a hard or soft release. A mm -hmm. hard release is basically opening the cage, letting the animals out in the wild and that's it, goodbye and you know, good luck to you. A soft release is where you uh, actually still feed the animals in the wild, maybe have enclosures in the wild that you open after a while, mm -hmm. you still feed the animals, you still check on them. Uh, with tigers that's of course not possible, yeah. but a bit of another problem is that tigers generally in the wild have a very strict kind of territorium where right. they live. Um, they have a different kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. A until now it's been impossible to have um, uh, captive bred tigers yes. to go back to the wild. Okay. So. In the case of the tigers here, no, they, they will uh, be with us for the rest uh, of their lives. Yes, okay. And I thought yesterday, uh, you know, the tour guide really explained that quite well, like, mm -hmm. because I think that was the questions that people were asking about, can they can they get back in the wild? Yeah. But, you know, after an awful start, it, 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 you, you know, you can't get that back. Well, you, 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 you could, and I think this is very possible, mm. you could actually raise tigers in captivity in very large enclosures. I would say basically the Jurassic Park kind of <laughs> yeah. uh, kind yeah. of up, you know, if the money would be there, if the willingness, the political will would be there, mm. we could maybe fence off large areas okay. and, and have them breed in captivity basically in there, and, and they could be trained. And I think the second or third generation would actually uh, be fit to be released back to the world. But who is going to do that? I, mm. I wish I could. Mm. So tell us a little bit about your setup here and the tourism part of wildlife and animals in Thailand. 
Yeah, unfortunately, um, Thailand having so much nature and wildlife uh, in the wild, mm. uh, there are people that are uh, interested in making selfies, photographs with wildlife for a uh, as a tourism attraction, um, and that includes making selfies with tigers. Yes, that actually is a very lucrative business. It's mm. not illegal in Thailand. Once the tiger is you know legally obtained, people can do whatever they want with it. Mm. The animal welfare laws in Thailand are written in a law of only six, six pages. So, uh, what is torture? What is uh, maltreatment? It's not really not really clearly stipulated. So, um, yeah, putting tigers on on the very short chains and and people making photographs with them is unfortunately still legal. Mm. And elephants it. as well. You know, you see on tourism sites so many places say this is our ethical elephant camp. You know, how how do what distinguishes what you do here compared to maybe some other type of uh, places yeah. that tourists would go to? Yeah, there's no legal um, uh, rule, but you can call yourself a rescue centre mm. or an elephant refuge or whether you're just an elephant camp for tourism. And it's very difficult, I believe, for, for tourists to actually distinguish what is a good place to go and what's not. Mm. And there are also some international organisations that bring out lists of, of, of camps or rescue centers that, uh, that are ba basically saying, well, this is a good one, that's not a good one. But it's very, it's very difficult. Yes. You know, uh, when, for example, hand feeding an elephant, would you call that unethical or animal torture, yes or no? Mm. I think when elephants have been with people all their lives, uh, or most of their life, mm. uh, I think the feeding of elephants is not a massive problem. Right. I mean, it's better to have a mahout, an ele elephant keeper, to take take care of the elephant. It's also safer, of course, mm. because an elephant is still a wild animal. But I think um, it's a very thin line. I mean, what is what is right and what's wrong? But one, once people are really really uh, pushing animals to do things, make them ride uh, elephants, for example, mm. uh, making photographs with tigers, mm. I think then you're crossing the line, yes. and then you're not a rescue center anymore. It needs to be ethical. It needs to be. Uh, the, el the wel welfare of the animals should come first. Because one thing I've noticed, and because I've done your tour twice, is the guides talk about, you know, whether it's bathing, whether it's riding, you know, talking about some of the things that the elephants go through. And I think that's really interesting that you probably don't always read about <laughs> that. No. Some people go, oh, well, it's okay to bathe, you know, elephants bathe, but it, it's, it's an unnatural thing to be doing that six or seven times a day, is that right? If you do it six or seven times a day, it's definitely not natural anymore. Yeah. Um, baiting an elephant, for example, washing an elephant is important. Mm. Uh, at least every other day should be done. Uh, if an elephant does, doesn't have the chance to do it by himself, by herself. Uh, so that button, uh, you know, then you let them, uh, the mahouts do it. Mm. Or do you have a volunteer allowing to do this? Or you're having tourists to do this? Mm. Uh, with us, we basically say, well, the volunteers can help the mahout. But n not every elephant. It's only the ones that are that really need to be washed yes. for skin issues and etc. Um, but we don't do this with tourists. Okay. No, that's that's not. First of all, I don't think it's ethical. Second of all, it's also dangerous. Mm. An elephant could make one move to the side and with the trunk. Um, just, to, it's just, it's just not safe. Safe. No. You're listening to Lee Higgins, and my guest today has been and still is Edwin Week, who is the founder of the Wildlife Friends Foundation Thailand. Edwin, tell us about this organization and this foundation here. You know, what can tourists expect if they come here? Yeah, since uh, yesterday we officially opened the Stripes Restaurant. And the Stripes Restaurant is um, basically a small, I would say, coffee shop restaurant uh, overseeing the Tiger Sanctuary. Mm. You can actually just walk in, uh, come up here and have a cup of coffee, look around from the viewpoint only you, you cannot walk amongst the tigers that's not <laughs> that's not going to happen yeah. um, and you can actually have a small tour if you want one but for those people that have been to WFFT the Wild Defense Foundation in the past who have done the tour oh. and said well still still want to come back you can just come for a lunch for a little visit hang around and um, see you know behind the scenes a little bit mm. what the tigers do during the day um, and from the 1st of July, actually, there's a shuttle bus three times a day where people can get on the bus and uh, visit us as well. Besides Stripes Restaurant, we also still have the Elephant's Lodge where people can watch the elephants from where we're sitting right yes, now, actually. Yes, amazing. Yes. Yeah. So that's a bit of a, like a Thai restaurant uh, and a place where you can uh, also hang out and, and just, yeah, look around. 
um, while we still continue our full day and half day tours as well. Yes. Uh, but then people are, are being picked up that's included in the price okay. to be picked up from Cham, Hoi Hin or even Pramburi. Um So there's something for everyone. A small, short visit and just uh, a cup of coffee is possible. A whole day is also an option. And it's not a zoo. It, this is, and that's why no. you do the, the tours that are set up at certain times. Yeah, we, we uh, very often get the question, why are you not a zoo? People cannot just walk around. No. Uh, you need to go on a guided tour for obvious reasons. First of all, you need to be ed educated or <laughs> informed properly. Correct. The second thing is, um, you know, we don't have really um, fences for animals only. Uh, we, we don't have fences for people to stay away from the yes. animals. So if we let people walk around by themselves, it's 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 a hazard. We don't yeah. want to we don't want to do that. And people can stay here as well. You've got multiple areas where people can stay yep. overnight here yep. as well. We have a lodge with uh, 11 standard rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them are family rooms for up to four people. Then we have also uh, four bungalows yes. with private pool with the view over the elephant sanctuary, which I think is a v very popular um, place to be. Oh, yeah. I've got to say, it's very unique and you can hear the gibbons and you can see the elephants. It's absolutely amazing, yeah. Edwin. Yeah. So we've got some posts up on our Facebook page, but uh, Wildlife Friends Foundation Thailand is your website, so people can find out lots of information there. Yep. It's wft.org. That's the that's the page uh, of the foundation. Okay. But Wildlife Friends Foundation Thailand is also found on Facebook. Okay, fantastic, Edwin. Well, thank you very much for your time today. No, you're a very busy man, but uh, it's been very insightful. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lee. Okay, thank you. And today I am broadcasting live from the Wildlife Friends Foundation Thailand. And I've got another very special person who is sitting beside me. Kunjem, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Sadika? Good. Sadika. Now tell me what you do here at the foundation. So I am an elephant coordinator. Okay, what yeah. does that involve? So here we have a program for volunteers. So my job is basically take care of the volunteer and take care of the elephants. Okay, yeah. so all the volunteers that work here uh, all report to you, is that right? Only on elephant program. On the elephant, yeah. okay. Majorly, yeah. So what do you have to get them doing? So here basically we take care of the elephants. Mm -hmm. Every day we need to clean the enclosure, we need to prepare food for them and uh, yeah, just make sure that elephants here have a good life, quality and life. And how long have you worked here? A year and four months. Wow, and what do you love about being here? To see people, to see animals, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. To uh, based on their past life, and now we provide them a good life. So that that kind of make me happy. You must see lots of elephants that come in that have had a really poor start to life. Yes. Yeah. Is that hard? to cope with? You know, is it hard seeing that or you find it inspiring that you can now help those animal, an elephants? Is, uh, in Thailand now there's still a lot of elephants that still work yeah. in other places, yeah. work for people, give rights to people, but we have 23 elephants and um, um, we cannot change the world, but we, we can do that give them a better life than we have. Even now it's just 23 elephants, but it's a I think good start. Yeah. I, it is a good start. Yeah. I think you're changing the world one <laughs> elephant at a time, which is really, really good. Is there an elephant that means a lot to you? Like, is there one elephant that you go, oh, you know, that's my favorite? Uh, is that a hard yeah. question? Hard question. Hard question, because they've all got something special. Yeah. Yeah, but is there one that sort of stands out to you, or do they have their own personality? Oh, they have the, their own personality. Mm. They, they can be mm, a little bit bitchy, yeah. <laughs> <I would say. laughs> but in a nice way, they, yeah. they have their own personality. But yeah. I would say my favorite one is an uh, elephant called Alicia. Alicia. Yeah. Oh, what a beautiful name. And yeah. what's special about her? Uh, now she's blind both sides. And yeah, she, she has a she kind of strong personality yeah. th th uh, throughout her friend, Okay, but okay. I like her. Well, thank you, Kunjem, for coming yeah. in and chatting with me today. Yeah. And uh, I can tell that you're very passionate about what you do. <laughs> so thank you very much for thank coming you. on Surf Radio. Thank you.
I'm here live at the Wildlife Friends Foundation Thailand and I've got another guest sitting beside me. Oh, I'm loving it here. <laughs> it's Kungit. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, Sawadee Ka. Sawadee Ka. Yeah. So what do you do here at um, the, the foundation? Okay, I'm a wildlife coordinator. Okay, well, what yeah. does that mean? What, yeah. what do you do? Uh, mostly we take care with the wild animals that we rescue mm -hmm. here, like primates, bears, some of the wild animals around here yeah so on a daily basis basically what do like, you have to do basically we have to prepare the foods for them like twice today and also we have to observe the activity like that we do on that day as well like for report the wet teams and also we have to do the enrichment for them and okay. take care with the volunteers and then train them how to do the take care with the white animals. Right, yeah. so they're, they're guided by you around yeah, yeah, what like, they need to do on a daily yeah, basis, yeah. the volunteers. So are you looking at the animals' health and well-being? Can you watch to see if they're being healthy or their health is going down? Is that a job yeah, that you do? Yeah, it's quite like that as well. Because that's easy, because mostly we have to feed them by food, right? And we, we do it by staff and sometimes with the volunteers. Mm. It's easy to look at after when they come to eat or some of them. So that's quite a big job yeah, because yeah. you've got a lot of animals yeah. here to look it's after. That's why we take care like almost 800 of the animals here. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So you're <laughs> yeah. on it all the time. Yeah. And Why do you like working oh, here? Because I um, like them when they come out to eat and enjoy with their food, enjoy with their life here. Yeah. Well, we all love food. Yeah. <laughs> they like the food that I made. Yeah. They like the enrichment that I do. Yes. Like. And have you always been interested in animals? Um, like my favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. I really like primate, like especially gibbons. Mm. I like the gibbons. So I'm going to ask you a question about yeah. the gibbons. Yeah. The sound that they make, you yeah. know, yeah. is amazing. Yeah. It's full on, but amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. So why do they do that? Do you know? Um, depend on like that time, like early in the morning that's try to communicate together mm -hmm. also and also they make sound when they're hungry mm. and then they talk each other and well I think you've got one of the best jobs around yeah. so <laughs> yeah. and it looks like you've been enjoying it as yeah. well so thank yeah. you so much for coming on and yeah. chatting with me today <laughs> <laughs> there's the blow monkeys very active for being at the Wildlife Friends Foundation Thailand and I have another guest sitting next to me today. Tommy, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. That's good. Now tell me what you do here at the foundation. I'm the operations manager, uh, so I do a million different things every day. Yeah. Uh, from staff management, rescue work, uh, animal management things, some illegal wildlife trade stuff, uh, picking up trash. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Everything. And how did you land in Thailand? I Other than in a, on a plane. On a, I, I did arrive on a plane. Yes. I, I, I'm a little bit older than some of the people around here, but I didn't come on a boat. Yes. Uh, I came on a plane mm. uh, in 2008. I was here as a volunteer for six months. Okay. And then for the past 18 years, I've kind of been in and out under different guises, and I've been back for eight years, nine years, nine years. Okay. Yes. So what keeps you here? The animals, yeah. yeah. The work that WFFT does with the animals, uh, the good work WFFT does with the animals. Mm, because you do a lot of work, like all of it is about rescued animals. So some of these animals come in with really awful starts to life. How do you cope with that? How do you get through your day and get out the other end? Seeing the successes we have with those that we're able to nurture back to health and release back to the wild mm. is the main aim, right? Obviously, yes. it's not that easy, and a lot of the animals are given permanent sanctuary here but but the ultimate goal is to save these animals and get them back out there and your days must be very different from one day to the next oh, because the day. animals are always different from one day every to the next. Day. What have every you been day. doing this morning? Uh, we have been moving two female Malayan sun bears from a, an area where they've been housed temporarily uh, who will be moving to some huge new wonderful enclosures uh, and hopefully be able to, to match them together so they will have a friend. And where are they from? They both came from zoos. Mm -hmm. uh, Sia came from a zoo in Pattaya. Mm -hmm. uh, she was rescued just before COVID. Yeah. And then Puki is the other one, and she came from a zoo in Phuket. Right. Both those zoos closed down. Yes. Uh, uh, and they wanted help with basically rehoming their animals, and where better else than WFFT?
Yeah, and do these animals come with, you know, they have they got health issues? Do you have to look after them? What Tell us a little oh, bit more about that. Completely, uh, and particularly the ones that have been in captivity for many, many years. Mm. Uh, we see her now, she's a, a, an elderly bear. We've just done some x-rays and the vets are finding some things that we didn't know were there before. Maybe right. some something wrong with her lungs, uh, but we estimate she's about 20 years. Yes. Uh, and you imagine that these animals, Pookie, uh, Pookie, see, uh, both of them came from very, very small cages, like two, two by two meter cages on concrete, oh. and they'd spent 10, 15 years just sat there, basically. Yeah, so they can come with a, a multitude of health issues. So you've got to get them now used to not being in those little square boxes, don't yes. you? So how do you do that? Each species is different, mm. uh, and sun bears in particular are quite nervous, mm. even those that have been in captivity for many, many years. So change is, 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 is quite stressful for them. Mm. So it's done slowly, uh, obviously with kindness and, 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 and with lots of nice treats like honey and things like that. It's quite easy to convince a bear yeah. <laughs> with yeah. some honey. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Could be anybody, right? And so what keeps you here? The animals, yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. work, the work with the animals, seeing the animals' lives change, uh, and 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 seeing them become happy again. Yeah, you're yeah. so passionate. I can see that in your eyes, Thank and you. so passionate about what you do here. And tell us a little bit about the experience. That if someone come and comes and does a tour here, what what should they expect when they do a tour around the foundation? To learn something, mm. come with an open mind. Mm. Sometimes you might hear sad stories mm. and, and, and be real about things. Mm. And, 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 and thank you to those people that do come here instead of supporting places like uh, a so-called zoo in Hua Hin where you can go and pet tigers or a so-called place in Hua Hin where you can go and ride elephants. Come here and see them happy. Mm. We don't abuse the animals mm. here for profit. So. Well, I think uh, the whole team here are doing an amazing job, Tommy. Thank so, you, so much. Um, you know, really, I'm impressed. I did another tour yesterday and, uh, again, equally impressed as the first time. So uh, you guys are doing a fantastic Great. job. Thank you so much for coming Thank on to so the show much. today. Good Thank morning. You.